Hello, David. How you doing? Good. Good to be here. Okay. So I don't know if you heard the discussion we were just having here, but it it's was hard to miss. <laughs> <laughs> it was centering around. Uh, I think that the one party in this country is the party of greed. Uh, and uh, I know you're a disappointed Republican. As a, as a Christian, you were disappointed in how it came out when George Bush took office. Isn't the fundamental problem that the Republican Party, the real god of the party is mammon and not Jesus? Yeah, that it's it the party of business and corporations, and that's incompatible with the teachings of Christ. <laughs> You know, you, you've hit on the theme. Yeah. You've hit on the theme of the book. You know, the theme of my book is you can't serve two masters. Listen, I know what it is to be an angry, bitter Christian conservative. Right? I was one, uh, and and in a lot of ways, this book is is about that. You know, it's about how I got there. It's about the personal price I paid, uh, and it's about how I went to the Bush White House trying to fight for poverty, figuring that, that's, uh, that he would actually fulfill his promise for $8 billion a year uh, in fighting for the poor. And, and what was disappointing, what was shocking, was that uh, it was all talk, uh, very little action, and no one talked about poverty, but they benefited unbelievably politically by just talking about compassion. You know, it's interesting, I listened to your panel, and I thought what was interesting is, in the discussion, no one actually mentioned there are five million more poor people in America today. There are more people hungry in America today than there were in 2001. And yet, you know, the White House goes around touting how much it's done on compassion. And that's a facade. I think if it were any other area of, of public life, other than dealing with the poor, what, what the White House has said on compassion, and not done on compassion would be one of the biggest scandals of the presidency. Um, I, I can see why they wanted you as one of their spokesmen. <laughs> no, you're good, but um, I know they're mad at you now. And I know, and I know when you met. When, when did you meet George Bush? When he was running for office, right? Yeah, early 1998. Okay, he, uh, and you were very impressed by him. Yeah, he was blown away, you might say. Blown away. I sat down with him in, in Austin, Texas, and he talked about economic justice and racial justice and social justice, and my jaw hit the floor. I mean, this is what I believe a politician should be about. So what do you, th do you think that the office, once he got there, changed him, or do you think he was just bullshitting you then? <laughs> I think what you guys were talking earlier is true. There's just this tremendous seductive power to politics. You know, I liken it in the book to Tolkien's uh, Ring of Power and Lord of the Rings. You, know, you slip it on for a while, you know, and it, it may be able, you may be able to do good with it. But ultimately, it's a, it's a terribly corrupting force. And one of the groups that it is most corrupting for is Christians. Uh, you know, it's one of the things you know, the late Oxford theologian C.S. Lewis warned about. He said, when a Christian gets to the point of using his faith as a means to an end, rather than the end itself, he's screwed. That was my interpretation, but... And, uh, and that's what I've seen over and over hey, quit again. quit quoting scripture! <laughs> <laughs> that's what well, I've seen but, over... But it seems to me George Bush is a guy who got where he is because he said, I have integrity and honor, and the reason you know I have integrity is because I love Jesus. You're, you've nailed it. And you've I always say, it. you know what, so what if you love Jesus? Would Jesus love you? Well, two things, uh, two things I think are important here. I, I, know, I know Jesus loves everybody, but, but is it, if Jesus was a hard ass like his dad. <laughs> well, there are two important things you make there. One, actually Jesus loves everybody, even Democrats. Uh, that's an important point. Right? <laughs> Jesus loves liberals. Right? Jesus loves homosexuals. Jesus was a I liberal. I know. It's amazing. Right? I mean, if Jesus, Jesus was around is, today, he'd be a hippie, wouldn't he? I think he would. Yeah. Right? Well, Jesus, how many Republican hippies are there? His, Jesus' message is pretty simple, right? You know, you love me, love your neighbor, care for the poor, raise from the dead. It's a pretty simple message. But your point about how the White House has presented Jesus is exactly what I talk about. And that is, this is this unbelievably concerted effort to, uh, to convince evangelical Christians that George W. Bush is their pastor-in-chief. You know, that he is their brother in Christ, and that's why they should support him. It's really a remarkable thing that uh, happened during the 2000 campaign, continues to this day, because it says to Christians, trust him just because he's a Christian like you. 
And it's been this unbelievable sort of, uh, it's like morphine to the Christians because they won't touch him. They won't criticize him. They won't but talk about it. Isn't there something inherent in people of faith that they do trust? I mean, hmm. I mean I'm mean, i not trying to be insulting in any way, but they call it the flock. And what are flock? Sheep. Yeah, no. Jesus talks about people of faith as sheep. And sheep are dumb. Uh, and, they, and they stink, which is a bad combo. But you know, there is... There is this combo, and you, you know the name Chuck Colson. You know, he wrote right. about his experience in the Nixon White House, and he said exactly what you're talking about. There was no group that was easier to control than Christians. And he said he reached the frightful conclusion that it's because Christians are terribly seduced by power. And that's one of the things I try and talk about in my book is I have this radical suggestion that for the next two years, Christians take a fast from politics. Just stop, right? Keep voting, but stop giving all of the money that you're giving to the huge Christian advocacy groups. You know, instead, give them to the poor. You know, stop giving all of the money. I couldn't stop, agree with you more. Stop giving all of the money to fund all of those horrible ads on television you know, and give it to maybe saving genocide in Darfur. But, you know, for this, okay. for Good. this, I have been labeled, I, I actually have a new, a new label. I am now officially a member of the Axis of Evil, uh, according to to a Christian columnist, which I guess I should take as a bit of, you know, a badge of honor because I'm the only one who yes. doesn't have a country. Welcome to the club. The meetings are at Tuesday at my house. <laughs> okay, thanks. David Crow, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, yeah, I was...